All right. Uh, for this session, we're going to be um, uh, reviewing some challenges that we've already done. But um, I think collectively, we felt like this would be helpful to um, take the concepts deeper. Um, maybe the first uh, first time through, we weren't um, really grasping the concepts. So um, at least Mesfin and I, we felt like it would be helpful for us to go back through, uh, at least from some challenges prior, and um, let's work through them again. So that's what we're gonna do this, this time around. All right, so looking at create a stateful component. What Before the, did you understand the difference between stateful component and stateless component? Um, I think a stateless component. Yeah, a stateless component is functional component. If there is no state, we write it as a function. If there is a state in component, we should write class. Mm, okay. Yeah, I, I think I understand for the most part, yeah. So yeah. remember the that state, state, right? it, state involves an object, right? Yeah. State in, is initializing the, the object constructor. with properties. Oh, uh, yeah. That's constructor. Inside constructor, we initialize the state. But basically, there are two things, functional component, class component. Functional component is stateless. If you want to use state, you should create class component using class. Yeah. So we need state is only to pass some data from the class to the... Yeah, not like that. If, if your component doesn't depend on any state, you write it as a simple function. If component needs some state, we write it as some class. But in recent update, in uh, I think React 16.8, they added some feature called hooks. So using hooks, we can write state in functional components also. So we don't need to use class from a new version of React. I mean, why we need state in the first place? Yeah, state is like uh, the data which changes but use to the user interaction. If something changes regularly, you should keep it in state. Uh -huh. The state is useful to update the UI. If state changes, the UI updates automatically. Yeah, so that means you first initialize the state yeah. in your class section, then yeah. you pass that state into the rendering section. Yeah. And if you want to pass that state data to some other components, we can pass it as a prop to other components. Yeah, I also confusion between state and prop. Yeah, if you there was understand that we use the prop, me, then yeah, state is internal to that particular component only. Prop is coming from other component. Means we are passing that prop values from rendering, so it will we can access that values from in the props. So state is like local and yeah. prop is kind of global. Which is some yeah. Global means so if you just watch the code in the props, we pass the values of props from rendering where we render the component like some name equal to I think if you open the code, it will be easier to grasp the concept. In the documentation, they clearly explain the difference between state and props. Okay. Hello, can you can you open the documentation? You like to. Main concepts, yeah. It would be state. Yeah. 
Click that, we'll see. Should I just read this section? Okay, state and life cycle. This page introduces the concept of state and life cycle in a React component. You can find a detailed component API reference here. Consider the ticking clock example from one of the previous sections. In rendering elements, we have only one way to update the UI. We call react.dom to change the rendered output. Okay, so it's calling React. Yeah, at, um, we have some functional component. We are, we are, we are taking some data and if you want it's calling the function tick. Yeah. So is it like stateless now or what? Yeah, it's stateless. This is stateless, okay. Yeah, there's no this that state. We yeah. wrote it as a function, so uh, it should be stateless. Yeah. And if you uh, did you know this uh, set interval, Elliot, at the last line? Set interval. Yeah, that's a JavaScript method. Yeah, I know that. Tick is the function, and every uh, one second you have that. that set the... interval calls that function for every one second. One second. Thousand, yeah. thousand is milliseconds. So we can convert it to a second, one second it is. Eh? So the set interval calling the tick function for every one second. So it will keep on calling. Hello world and the death, hello world and the death every one second. Yeah, it is. And then it gives a and new oh, yeah, to, local to local, local time string. Yeah. So we are printing some date for every one second, it updates the date. So yeah. we don't need state if for you that. You can just copy the code and go to that code sandbox. You can see how it works. Yeah, try on code pin. Okay. Or else we can try that on our code sandbox. Let's see the result down here. Just pull up that hello world. Yeah. You can yeah, see so every second it's re rendering. Yeah. That is because we set interval for every second, it's rendering every second. It's calling that tick function for every second here. Change this uh, date method maybe for something else. But go to local, maybe change it to something else. When you press, you might get something. When you press dot. Here. Delete that one, then let's see if you can get something else. Yeah. They get the date, I think. Complete date. Date timestamp. Yeah. Remove that, yes. Uh, dot get 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 some get hours or right? get hours or something get yeah get hours two hours or yeah get hours yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. We are getting the hour. Yeah. You get minutes. Yeah. Okay. Is it eleven PM to you now? Yeah. Okay. Eleven forty two PM. That's why we're getting twenty three. Yeah. yeah. Remove that git hours and write minutes. Can't access it. It won't work if I do that. 
Yeah. No, you cannot access minutes in the hours. To get minutes. In the hours. If you want minutes, we should write again day dot minutes. If you want to, yeah. 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 Close that prepack. Yeah. You can get seconds also near the end. Right seconds also. Yeah, asterisk, but uh, yeah. Curly brace. The seconds. You can see uh, the updating seconds. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's neat. So this is uh, stateless. Yeah, it's stateless. Yeah. Yeah. Here we are declaring the date three times, but we can. Create it on a variable and we can reuse that variable to get seconds, hours, minutes. We just create some let date equal to new date and we can use that date to get the hours, minutes, and seconds. Instead of writing new date price. So let me load this up.
Okay, let's jump back over to. <coughs> All right. In this section, we will learn how to make the clock component truly reusable and encapsulated. It will set up its own timer and update itself every second. We can start by encapsulating how the clock looks. So, this is inside the DOM. Yep, the clock is clock on point. Date, new date. Done. Yeah, so here we have two components clock and tick. Right? Mm -hmm. Just see the function clock is one component, the function tick is one component, and we are rendering clock component inside tick. The clock date equals that is it. We are rendering the component here, and the date equal to that's date is a prop here. We are passing date equal to new date that is a prop. So mm -hmm. we can access that value in our clock component using props dot date. Mm -hmm. You can see that H two it is props dot date. They are using props dot date because they are passing as a prop from here in the rendering. This is how we use props. <laughs> they are using props dot date in H two because we are passing it as a prop from our tick component here in the clock date. We name it as date, so we can use that name as to access, we name it date equals. So we can use props dot date to access that value in our component. So here there is no parent or child component. They are just simply sharing data with a yeah. prop. Yeah. We can we can call it as a clock as a, a tick as parent and this <coughs> clock as child. Yeah, they're the sharing function. it by functions. They're just sharing there. Yeah. yeah. These two things are these two are components clock is one component tick is one component inside tick we are rendering clock component and we are passing some prop to the clock component so we can re receive this prop in our clock using that name date so props dot date will give this new date there in h2 so is it uh, tick is giving and clock is kind of receiving the information. It's like, okay, we create this clock in the tick component. Yeah, rendering that clock in Yeah, tick. we render that. Yeah. So simply, we use this tick to in the real DOM render. So the clock automatically loads inside the tick here. It's called breaking ui into some okay okay pieces. we don't need to we just render the tick on dom the automatically clock comes inside the tick okay once i think earlier just go to that to well thinking in react you'll understand how we write react the, Which the documentation you on the left side menu we are at five state and life cycle right just open the last thinking in React, 12th one. In main oh. concepts, you can. Here. The right side. Yeah. It will help to understand how React works and how we write React applications. React is, in our opinion, the premier way to build big, fast web apps with JavaScript. It has scaled very well for us at Facebook and Instagram. One of the many great parts of React is how it makes you think about apps as you build them. In this document, we'll walk you through the thought process of building a searchable product data table using React. Start with a mock. Imagine that we already have a JSON app or API and a mock from our designer. The mock looks like this. Okay. So we want to yeah. build something like that. Some yes. items and then yeah. price. And you want to have a search filter that would um, yeah. you know, have the possibility to 
Only so there's products in stock. So I would need to check if if in stock, then it would render it. But if it's not in stock, then it would um, it would not be included in the render. But uh, this search is open, so it hasn't been used yet. So this is, must be everything. Yeah, but it's, it's just design, and we'll walk through how we. Will it using React? Yeah, our JSON API returns some data that looks like this. Okay, it's got category, price, stuff, and the name is the football. And then those are items. Is it object? Yeah. So every true, object? true. Yeah, false. True in stock, false, true. Okay. So if we check the box, then we would just want the trues to show up. So it would be the football, the baseball, iPad touch, next to seven. Okay. Just Cool. I think we are not just building, just go through how they break it into some UI. We want to build a smart as a React app and we'll see how they break it into some UI parts. All right. The first thing you want to do is to drop boxes around every component and subcomponent in the mock and give them all names. If you're working with a designer, they may have already done this. So go talk to them. Their Photoshop layer names may end up being the names of your React components. But how do you know what should be its own component? Just use the same techniques for deciding if you should create a new function or object. One such technique is the single responsibility principle, that is, a component should ideally only do one thing. If it ends up growing, it should be decomposed into smaller subcomponents. Since you're often displaying a JSON data model to a user, you'll find that if your model was built correctly, correctly your UI and therefore your component structure will map nicely. That's because UI and data models tend to adhere to the same information architecture, which means the work of separating your UI into components is often trivial. Just break it up into components that represent exactly one piece of your data model. All right, so here we have some lines around that box. Yeah, some boxes with the different entire colors. thing has yellow. Yeah, that one is app component. This is search. parent component. Uh, that one is the every box is one component. Yeah. So the sporting goods category. So we have five components. I think. They mentioned it in the bottom line. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So we'll see here that we have five components in our simple app. We've italicized the data. Each component represents. Okay, so there's a filterable table that's in orange. It's everything. Yeah. That is one component. It contains the entirety of the example. Okay, search bar in blue. And that receives all user input. And there's the product table in green. Displays and filters the data collection based on user point. So, so I'm gonna take the input and it will uh, 
it will filter the data collection. And there is category row that displays a heading for each category. And then there's a product row in red that displays a row for each product. If you looked at product table, you'll see that the table header containing the name and price labels isn't its own component. This is a matter of preference, and there's an argument to be made either way. For this example, we left it as part of product table because it is part of rendering the data collection, which is product table's responsibility. However, if this header grows to be complex, i.e. if we were to add a, a force for sorting, it would certainly make sense to make this its own product table header component. Now that we've identified the component in our mock, let's arrange them into a hierarchy that this is, uh, this is easy. Components that appear within another component in the mock should appear as ch child in the hierarchy. So there's the federable product table search bar and then product table holds the product category row and the product row. Uh, Mesfin or Srikanth, would you like yeah. to read this part? I, I can stop sharing. We're on step, step yeah, two. If you, can, if you can read, it's okay. Um, I, I need to get some water or something. My throat is getting dry. Okay, okay. Would some would one of you mind uh, reading that while I get some water real quick? Yeah, go, go. try and get for some water. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> Can you read, Shika? Yeah, I love it. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, I'm back. Okay. First, we will review what we have read so far. Okay. Did you understand some anything from this, the table and all those kinds of things here? Um, just the. The components yeah. are nesting inside of each other. And yeah. You can say this is a app component, and then we're creating some search bar component separately in search, search bar.js, and we'll write this code for the search bar in that component, and we'll render this in app component. I will mm -hmm. show that in. Hello. Uh, meanwhile, I'll show one more thing, guys. I'm working on that free code camp project, Markdown to here. This is the so far, I have done this. Okay. This is like GitHub README. We write something like this in GitHub, right? Yeah, yeah, with the markdown. Markdown, yeah. This is markdown. But these are components that are created yeah. in React. I show the code how I created. So it'll, yeah. So, yeah. Can when I went to the uh, Magnolia JS uh, yeah. uh, workshop. The instructor created one of these in like less than 10 minutes. Yeah, it's, I think it's so easy. We, you, yeah. I'm just using some API. I will show the code for this is one component, the editor. The preview is one component. I'll show that. VS code. 
if you uh, just close that. Yeah. If you, this is my source here. If you see, this editor is one component. You can see here also. This editor is one component. Mm -hmm. This preview is one component. And this is CSS file app is and this app JS is main component. So here I'm importing React. And this is importing editor component, importing preview component, and this default markdown is I have placed some markdown by default here, right? This is this is some default thing. So I separated into some JS file to it's just a string, string of some default markdown syntax. I just place it in a string. It, here you can see the user back text, so I can write in multiple lines. If we write string in the back text, we can write in multiple, we can take multiple lines to complete the string like this. So here coming to the app.js, I'm in the render, I'm rendering editor and preview. And this is prop. We call this is prop because we're passing some value to that component here. The markdown is the name, and this is value. This is called prop. So we can access it in the component with if you see this is destructuring. I think you guys know this. This is restructuring. Otherwise, we should write something like this in our I'm destructuring, so I just use directly handle change and markdown. These things, this name. If there is no destructuring. I should write something like props dot handle change. So we can use uh, props and uh, state at the same time, like in the same component. Can we use yeah. that? Yeah, we can use. Yeah, state is like internal. Prop is coming from something like this. This is a component, but these prop values are coming from this. Yeah, from external value, rendering. We are passing those values for rendering. So in this way, we can use this component. We can reuse this component with different data. Suppose I will I have some button. I will create something like that. Wait. I'll show how we. Suppose I'll create some button component. How we reuse component using that props. Import. React from React. I'm writing it as a functional component, so it won't use any state now. Right. This is button. I just want to reuse this wherever I need some button. So I'll make use of props here. So we can re reuse it. I'll show how. So we'll receive some prop here. Prop start. Okay. Yeah. I should export it. To import it somewhere, we should export it. I'm using ESLint. Elliot, you asked some another name. What is ESLint, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm added ESLint to my project environment. So this red line is saying that. You must use destructuring means it's linting something, so it forced to use some certain standard way. Whenever you write something like this, it force you to use some standard way. So it's saying that use destructuring. So I should destructure here and this name 
this is object structuring so i can directly use name here without using props.name and again it's saying that name is missing in props validation So for that, I have to use prop types. We practice this in a free code camp. Import prop prop types from the the prop type is separate module. We should import it and we should write prop type to our the name prop so button dot prop prop types equals something like here the prop is name so name colon capital prop types dot so the name is string here so i will use string and i will say it is required so there is no linting error so far so this is button component and so basically okay i will just we can write something like this submit or something but we can't reuse it every time you render it will show submit in the button only i will show it and later once then we will write this okay. i will render this button somewhere in the i have I should import it before rendering. Import button from yeah, button. I should render this. I should render it. Now button is a component. If we go back to our okay, I'm using flex, so it is showing this something like this. I should stop for now. I think it is there. This is our button. If I want to reuse this button every somewhere else, if I, we can write something like, we can use a button again also. It again loads the submit only. So it, it makes no sense. So I want to use it for some other purpose. I will take this again. I'm using this button four times, but every time I'm getting submit only. So it doesn't make sense. If I want to use it some other purpose, I'll make it as a, I'll use the props here. There is a button, yeah. I just use of this prop. I'll use the prop in place of the submit. Now, from here, I will pass some value to that. I will make it as login. And one more thing I will show you guys. I'm, I'm using single code here, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I have prettier in the setup, and whenever I save it, I, in the settings, I have mentioned that should convert it into double quotes. Double whenever quotes. I save it, yeah, is automatically converting that single quote into double quotes. The prettier doing that job, so it will. Our code looks clean, so we can. If we mention somewhere accidentally is a single quote, it will convert into double quotes. So we can follow yeah. the same. Structure in so you install the picture on the visual yeah. code, right? Not uh, yeah. like for the specific project. Yeah, we, we can add to that specific project also here because yeah. I'm running it through ESLit. I'm combining Prettier and ESLit together. I'll yeah. show that on a 
Okay, I misspelled it. And I will name this as something like reset. So if you go back to our, you can see oh, yeah. we, are, we have created only one component button, but we are reusing it using prop. Yeah. This, this name is called prop. Yeah. And every time we can use, are, yeah. yeah, we can reuse that button. So that is the goal of React. We can reuse pieces of UI. Which yeah. You can see login, logout. We can mm. use that button for different purposes. Yeah. We have just wrote button as a component with this small code and we are using for different purposes. We can pass something if you want to pass a method, we can pass that method also here. Something handle click. And you can perform different action on that click. If you want to when a user click, on click something. Yeah. yeah. We can pass the method when user click login, it performs a certain login thing. It will perform logout or something. So basically this is prop. Yeah, this is button is a component. We are rendering it here and we are passing value from here. So this is prop. So we can access the prop here in props dot name. And this is restructuring. I can directly write something like this props dot name. But if you destructure it, it will look cleaner. So we can yeah. simply use name here. Hmm. This is nothing but props and the name mean props and the this one is name and if suppose we have some more uh, prop you can just write here after this okay. uh, like this is one more prop we can directly use something like on click in our button yeah on click something like this we can handle and you're saying that and if it is missing in prop values, so asking to validate in prop types, you should write something like here prop types dot so click is a function, so a func and it is required something like to use prop types. We should install prop type package using npm and we should import it. I'm importing this is this like import prop types from prop types. This is a npm package I installed and importing it into prop types. Cap so here capital P prop types. That capital P prop types is using here. This this one is coming from this name. Uh, did you understand Mesfin and Alien? What's the component? How we are using props here? Yeah, now yeah, prop, I, uh, is, yeah. This, prop yeah. is coming from the rendering point, so it is coming from the render. Yeah, we are passing this value here, so we can reuse it. We can use that value there. That, that is prop and come into state. You can see I have some state here. Let's just remove this. Yeah. This is my this is my state. In my state, I'm just storing this text. I just separated into some file. This is a string. This is just a string. Constant default markdown. Is it just a string? Just I have some the bra lines, so I separated into a file. Yeah. And importing that file here using the import default markdown. To import something, you should export it. Otherwise, yeah, you don't work. Uh, yeah. Here, should export like this export and that file that variable or function or component anything yeah should be that name export it so i'm importing it so we can use this name to access that value so here yes. in my state this is my state in state the name is markdown and the value is this string i'm using this variable so uh, that value comes here yeah is, the state is Within this app component only, the other yeah. components doesn't know about the state and even they don't know whether it is a class component or functional component. This is internal to this component only. 
Yeah. I'm passing that state to editor and preview components as a prop. This this is prop. We have editor component, right? This is yes. editor. The thing is asking something. Yeah, I just changed it into. I commented on this to show. Yeah. If you use ESLint, it will highlight these errors, so we can follow some unique standard writing code. And one more thing, there are some style guides. Style guides are there. Some Google follows some code style. Some other companies follow some other style. The in React community, the popular style guide is Airbnb style guide. So uh, I'm using that. What is that? Airbnb. Airbnb. I think some. Uh -huh, Airbnb. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Total booking app is there. They have created some style guide. Okay. Uh, I will show that. I think for that we need to. I'm using Airbnb style guide through my ESLint. So. Yes, let look up in that style guide and force me to write code in that particular way. So it, we can write them some standard code. If we, we are working as a team, we add some such style guide. We all can write in a in this some standard way. Mm -hmm. Suppose we, we three are writing code. If we add yeah. style guide through yes, lane, it forces us to write in that force to follow that particular style. So okay. our code looks cleaner so everyone yeah. has to write in that particular way that's okay. that's why if i use a props dot it's forcing to use destructuring so if you are my teammate you are using props dot it will force you to use destructuring here so everyone okay. write in a standard way our code looks unique and if mm. for that this is eslin for this Configuration file. We need to configure ESLIN to use it. Here you can see Airbnb. Airbnb. Yeah. And this is, I mean, Prettier. Prettier is doing that converting single quotes to double quotes something yeah. automatically. It converts those things automatically. Okay. It's correcting the ESLIN errors automatically. It's correct some errors. Few errors. So time, uh, we need to use this Airbnb for the yeah. rat. Yeah. Oh. If you use Airbnb, it looks, code looks standard. Yeah. You can follow some st industry standard because if I don't use that Airbnb here, I use double quote and again I mistakenly use single quote. It yeah. looks messy. Yeah, yeah. So it automatically is changing my code to look cleaner. So yeah. uh, throughout my code, I'm just following the uh, double quotes only. Mm. And this is one useful thing. So uh, here. We are talking about this. Editor is a component and preview is a component. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll just close this. Yes, yes, yes. This is one component. This is one component. I'm passing this is name, passing two props to it. I'm passing some props, properties. This markdown is the name and passing the this markdown is coming from state. If you see here, I destructured it. Markdown equal this dot state. If there is no destruction, I should write something like this dot state dot markdown here. This dot state dot markdown. But my ESLint forced me to use destructure. Must use destructuring statement, state assignment. We can write this way also, but I'm destructuring the state. So you can simply write markdown. Sorry. Uncommon. Even though here, if you observe that, it's saying that unused state field. I have declared some state, but I haven't used it anywhere in my app. So it's showing that you have some state value, but you haven't used it anywhere. Okay. <clears throat> Un unused state field. So now, now I'm using the state, so it won't show any error here. And this is the component and pa passing some property to that component. This is the name and this is value. This value is coming from my state. And for he, this component, I'm passing one method also. It's like every practice that text here. This is text area. 
This yeah. entire black box is text area. So user can type here. When on change means when something happens, I just change the CSS so it moved down. If I restore it back, uncomment this so it will work now. Uh, now you can see for every change, I'm updating the state. Yeah. Using this method, I'm just pass with some method to handle change. And the, what this handle change is doing is here, I'm updating the state. Mm. This, this value is coming from that text area. From the text area. Yeah. I'm updating the state with that typed value. And you can see, and passing this state to markdown here in the preview. So this markdown is state. I have, oh. When I update the state, you can ref see that change on the preview also because I'm yeah. using the state here. I can clear some, uh, everything so, and I can write something like this also. Yeah. So this is here why we are using state means is updating and we are using passing it to two components. Yeah. And one more thing. One more thing. Why I created a state in app component? Why not in editor or in preview? Like we are actually updating the state from editor, right? We can write state here, but I'm using the same state in two components, right? Yeah. I'm passing state value to two components. If I write keep yeah. my state in editor, I can't pass it to preview from here. So whenever your state used by multiple components. Just push your state up to the one parent component. From there, pass to its. Okay. So just uh, have a handle change. It update the state and passing to editor as a prop. This is called prop. We can. This is a name. Handle change is the name. We can name it anything, but I'm writing it as handle change. But don't. You can. The. I'm not. Uh, Saying the method is handle change, so I use handle change. We can write anything here, but we should use the same name here to access that in the props. Whatever name you gave there, you should use that name here to get that value. You can name anything, but to keep it clean, I'm writing in this. And this is prop, and this is state. I'm passing the state value as a prop to other components. So we can access that in props. Props dot markdown. Props dot handle change. This is te text area. If you see here, this is a text area. On change, I'm calling this handle change method. It again calls back to that handle change in the parent component. This one, it update the state, and the value is coming from this props dot markdown. So the text area is filled with some default value when. It, reload this is default value because i passed that as a prop from my state and i'm using here value equal to markdown if i don't provide any value it will be looks empty yeah i think must only be assigned to the non empty yeah, it's empty just to fill with some default value i'm passed using that. Yeah. So this is how we use react to work on some project yeah but like the pattern is almost the same right like in most almost in every project you do the yeah. same way yeah yeah we just take some design and we break it into some components this is yeah. we just mark some components this is one component this is one component we just write on the state yeah. props that's it we pass the states and prop wherever we required and yeah and decide like how the yeah. each component communicate to each other and that kind yeah. of stuff yeah that's it and i think in mint in other session i will show how to use this eslint prettier all and airbnb okay. style get together i will we will yeah. do one session on this complete setup what is bubble what is webpack we are in react setup we have bubble webpack React scripts, they have some things, right? Yeah. Uh, for, 
we are using create riga f tab so it's coming with a bundle so we need to configure but if you want to set up on yourself you should install bubble babel mark the webpack react scripts react react dom you have to yeah. install all those things and we should configure those things if you we can we will talk on this all setup one day yeah. and see what babel is and webpack is and how to use eslint prettier and this style okay. if you check my there is my package.json it will should we, uh, i should go away now in ah, one yeah, definitely yeah just one moment i'll show and uh, yeah the, this is script how much time do you have i have to go now because my son is already wake up so i have to take care of him uh, this is here you can see my dependencies means some package and eslint script here when you install something using npm that will update in your package.json here cool so if you fork my project into your setup you simply say npm install so it automatically install all these packages yeah. for you in your setup yeah and i don't have to install like individually yeah. yeah it all just set up everything for you yeah that is the job of this package.json when you clone someone's project if you just say npm install it will set up the complete project and install all dependencies using this package that says all right let me go now all right we'll yeah. see you next one um, okay what time is it here I, we might just end it here yeah and uh, the remainder of the time would be just project uh, project time yeah all right, goodbye, everybody. Bye, yes.